Welcome to the video where I change the brake shoes and hardware on a 1990 Ford Bronco. Uh, so here you can see the wheels and tires have already been removed um, and so is the hub. Uh, you can see I'm using this tool to remove the, the spring at the very top. Um, so that is the rear retaining spring for the for the brakes and then here is the front retaining spring for the brakes. Uh, now those springs come off pretty easy with a with the correct tool. If you're using a screwdriver to pry them off be very very careful because they fly all over the place. Uh, now you see I'm taking the cable off for the emergency brake adjuster. Now that you've removed the tension from those two springs, uh, you can remove them. And you'll notice that the second one, the, the back one, actually has a sheet metal retainer for that cable. Uh, then you can take off that little batwing retainer up at the top, which is a guide for the top of the brake shoes. Uh, and here you can see I'm using another specialty tool uh, to remove these retaining um, springs. And you can see there's a pin in the center that goes in through the back of the brake housing and that goes in to that retaining cap and turns 90 degrees uh, and that's what holds those in place uh, so here i'm re removing the front uh, retaining spring and pin and that is exactly the same as the rear one there you can see the pin turning 90 degrees these can be removed by grabbing onto them with pliers and pushing them in, twisting them. Uh, at this point, the retaining um, springs have been removed. So basically, if you're not careful, the brakes will all just fall out just like they did there. If they do fall out at this point, it's okay. Just carefully uh, realign them back up on the ground uh, so you know how they go back together. Uh, there I was just uh, showing you the uh, emergency brake cable, which is hooked to the emergency brake arm. It's very easy to take off. You just put some, need, uh, some pliers in there, uh, pull some tension off the spring, and then kind of twist that bracket and it'll pop right out. There I'm showing you the emergency brake arm that um, arm needs to be taken off the old brakes and saved because you'll use it later uh, so here i'm just inspecting the wheel cylinder and the little pads where the brakes rest you want to make sure that those are in good shape um, and usually people will grease those up um, i do not because i'm using this for a four-wheel drive vehicle and the grease will attract lots of dirt and cause wear uh, so here you can see i've laid out all of the brake parts on the ground the way they came out uh, and now i'm opening up um, my packages of new hardware. It's always a very good idea to replace the hardware. These are your brakes, uh, so you're going to want to make sure your hardware is good. Um, so if you get a full um, brake hardware kit like you see here, and I'll link this below, um, they have left hand hardware and right hand hardware, and uh, they're divided up into bags. Uh, here you'll see a universal bag um, which has um, all the parts for the right and the left but they're common parts uh, so here I'm just sorting through all of those and putting half of those parts uh, in a pile to use on this side of the brakes this is where it's important to uh, lay all your old brake parts out uh, like you see here um, because there are somewhere around 20 to 25 uh, pieces in that hardware kit uh, that you'll be putting in there. Uh, now you can see that center arm um, I cleaned up and painted because I'm reusing that. Um, and here you're seeing me remove that emergency brake arm. Uh, there's a horseshoe shaped clip uh, that you have to pry apart and you won't be reusing this because you pretty much so destroy it when you uh, take it off. But when you replace it, you put the horseshoe um, shaped clip around that pin and squeeze it with some pliers uh, so it doesn't come off. Uh, so now you can see I've installed that emergency brake arm on the new set of brakes over on the right hand side. Uh, now this arm that you're looking at you can see that it's got an R on it because it's on the right hand side. Um, that goes between the emergency brake arm and the other brake on the um, brake shoe on the other side so that way when the emergency brake is applied it puts pressure to both sides. Uh, so here you can see that I uh, have cleaned up the uh, brake area and given it a quick coat of epoxy paint. And um, now I'm putting in the emergency brake cable and that rear brake shoe. Uh, so he, there you can see there's a little, that little pin, that retaining pin sticking through the backside. That'll be the first thing we put on on this brake is uh, that retaining spring. So we put the pin through from the backside uh, and we kind of line it up. It's a little bit tricky 
Um, it's really a two-person job or a th man with three arms. Uh, so here I'm using that specialty tool to push in and then from the back side I turn that pin 90 degrees it just makes it easier to turn it from the back side and now you can see that sort of retains that brake shoe in place it's still a little bit floppy because it only has that one retaining spring but it's enough to hold it in place so it doesn't just fall out um, and they're making sure everything is lined up uh, and next you'll see me putting on the other brake shoe on the other side and I do the same thing I make sure that the little arms stick out of the uh, brake cylinder are in place um, make sure that that spring hole is in place and then I compress the spring and retaining cap uh, put the pin in from the back side give it half a turn and then I release the pressure and then you'll see that the brakes sort of hang there by themselves now I've done a lot of brake jobs over the years and um, I always did them with screwdrivers and pliers uh, but recently I've purchased this set of tools uh, to do these brake jobs and oh my word I should have done this years ago having the correct tools for the job is always really really uh, great um, so I've left a link below uh, so you can at least see the tools that I'm using uh, and then you can make your decision whether you want to do this with the correct tools or not uh, so here you can see that at, even after I have those retaining springs on it's kind of a struggle to get everything lined up but you uh, just get them all lined up and the, the important part is uh, that the top of your brake shoes where that little um, uh, c-shape area is gets is lined up with uh, the post at the top uh, so now that the brake shoes are in uh, you can see that I'm putting in that piece that runs between the emergency brake arm and the uh, front brake shoe. Uh, the next thing that I'm doing uh, here is putting in the self adjuster screw across the bottom. Uh, now that has two notches in the brake shoes uh, that just kind of line up and you'll see this like a knurled ring that goes around it. Uh, that you always want to make sure is lined up with that window uh, in the back plate. Uh, you can just barely see it um, behind there. Then I put that blue spring in um, and that blue spring is on the front side of the brake shoes and then the self-adjusting tab uh, is the shiny silver piece that I put in. So that spring goes from the front brake shoe to that shiny tab. Uh, now you can see I'm going to put on the rear uh, tension spring and you put the, that little sheet metal piece, uh, the little sheet metal cable guide around the spring, put the spring through the hole um, and then it, um, it sort of heads up towards that post uh, so you can sort of see the position that it has to be in um, and then uh, you will want to now it's not showing but um, you need to put the little bat wing retainer uh, back on before you put this cable on and you'll see by um, movie magic that it appears right here um, then you're going to run that cable from the um, self-adjusting tab um, up over you lift the shelf self-adjusting tab up and that'll give you enough length on that cable to put it over that stud uh, so you want to make sure that the cable is in that little cable track around that stud at the top and not binding up or touching anything anywhere around there um, uh, because that's uh, the self-adjustment for your brakes it's really important so here you can see I'm using another specialty tool to lift that spring up and drop it right on that works fantastic uh, so here what you want to do is make sure that that bat wing uh, retainer is pushed all the way back your cable ring is pushed all the way back and that first spring is pushed all the way back then you will put on the front tension spring um, and you can see that I clip that in and here's that specialty tool you hook the specialty tool on that post and just uh, pull the spring into position and then sometimes you can either use your thumb or a uh, screwdriver just to help it so it doesn't pop off there because it's not a lot of room for all of those pieces on that stud uh, you can see here that the spring is kind of a little bit off uh, kilter it should be nice and straight so I'm just using that tool to lift it up into place so it's nice and straight uh, so there there, you've got um, your brakes are pretty much so on there um, now you just check to make sure everything is in in a row make sure that adjuster works and what happens is when you're going in reverse and you push your brakes that adjuster actually clicks that and and increases um, the distance between those uh, brake shoes so that adjusts every time you're in reverse and push on the brakes um, so 
what you'll want to do is self adjust that or adjust that out um, so it's just barely smaller uh, than your new brake drum that you're going to be putting on so I adjust it slide the brake drum on then um, kind of rotate it around and then I'll adjust it some more and keep doing that um, sliding it on and off until you just barely have a little bit of tension on there um, and that'll be good and then the next time you're driving in your in reverse and push the brakes it'll actually tension itself so it's perfect I will link all the parts uh, and tools that I used uh, below um, so it'll make it easier if you want to purchase them um, so thank you very much for watching uh, me change the rear brakes on a 1990 Ford Bronco.